City of North Glen Channel 8, keeping you informed of events in your community. City Council meeting to order. Lisa, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Downing? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Dodge? Here. Council Member Snetzinger? Here. Council Member Malika? Here. Council Member Sowers? Here. Council Member Jill Brown? Here. Council Member Becky Brown? Here. Council Member Whitman? Here. Council Member Escabel? Here. Thank you. Would you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Jim, are there any responses to citizens' inquiry? Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any agenda additions or deletions? Okay. So the next thing we have, is Avery here? <laughs> okay. All right. All right, we have a service award. Yeah, come on right Show here. Show me your oh, yeah. <laughs> Come sit right here. To you. <laughs> I just didn't see you back there. I know. I was hiding in the back. I know. You can't do that. <laughs> I know. I'm saying hi. We're so sorry that I have to do this. I am too. I know. I know. But we're really happy that you were actually part of the Parks Board for a while. So we really appreciate it. Um, I want to present this to you on behalf of the Northland. Uh, this is the Dedicated Service Award presented to Avery Anderson. Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, November 23rd, 2015 to May 11th, 2017. Presented by the Mayor and City Council of North Glen, Colorado. This is the 22nd day of May, 2017. Congratulations. Thank you. Did you like it? Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sad. I'm moving downtown, and that's why I have to leave the board. Um, but I'll be around for sure still. I'm not leaving all together. So. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> One more. <laughs> thank you. Perfect. Take thank care. You. Enjoy downtown. <laughs> Hey. Yes. Next, we have public invited to be heard. Lisa, we didn't have anyone sign up. No one signed up. All right. So um, is there anyone here, though, that hasn't signed up that would like to speak to council for up to five minutes on anything besides the public hearings? Okay. Seeing no one approach, we will move on the agenda to the consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. Please open the vote. Vote is open. Please vote. The vote is closed and the consent agenda passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, next is public hearings and the first one is CB 1885. CB 1885, a bill for an ordinance repealing and reenacting <coughs> Chapter 21 of the North Glen Municipal Code, the North Glen Sign Code. I'll now open the public hearing on CB 1885. Is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against CB 1885? Is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against CB 1885? Okay, seeing no one approach, we'll close that public hearing and we'll move to the next one, which is CB 1886. CB 1886, a bill for a special ordinance amending the 2017 budget recognizing revenues and appropriating expenditures by supplemental appropriation 
for the payment of the costs and expenses of the municipal government, agencies, and offices of the City of North Glen, Colorado for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2017. Thank you. I'll now open the public hearing on CB 1886. Is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against <coughs> CB 1886? Is there anyone that would like to speak either for or against CB 1886? Seeing no one approach, I will close that public hearing and we will move to ordinance's second reading. Uh, Lisa, Lisa uh, since we've already heard uh, the title, uh, I would ask for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Jim? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, in front of you tonight is CB 1885, which is a bill for an ordinance repealing and reenacting Chapter 21 of the Municipal Code, uh, also known as the Sign Code. Uh, largely, these are due to changes uh, by Reed versus Gilbert, which is a Supreme Court case, as well as trying to make the code more user friendly. Uh, the staff did present uh, the code update to the Planning Commission in April. Also had a lunch and learn with the business community as well as a study session with City Council. Um, no substantial questions or feedback were received during that the most recent process. So we recommend approval of this ordinance and Mr. Svoboda is here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Discussion? Questions? Hearing none, please open the vote. Vote is open. Please, please vote. <coughs> the vote is closed and CB 1885 passes unanimously. Thank you. Next is CB 1886. And we heard the title a second ago, so I'll ask for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Jim. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, again, this is a special ordinance to amend the 2017 Operating and Capital Improvement Budget. Uh, largely associated with the CIP carryover from 2016 appropriations, costs associated with the Youth Commission training, a sign truck purchase, some bond proceeds for the Justice Center, and a trash truck purchase. Uh, you did approve this on first reading two weeks ago. Uh, we do recommend approval, and uh, Mr. Loveland is here to answer any additional questions you may have. Thank you. Discussion? Questions? Hearing none, please open the vote. The vote is open. Please vote. The vote is closed and CB 1886 passes unanimously. Thank you. Next we'll move to resolutions. Oh, sorry. We'll move to ordinances first reading and the first one is CB 1887. CB 1887, a bill for an ordinance consolidating and amending articles within Chapter 6 of the North Glen Municipal Code regarding disposition of personal property. Move to approve. Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members of Council, again, this is the, uh, the first reading of an ordinance uh, to consider repealing sections of the North Gun Municipal Code, Chapter 6, Article 12, titled Sales of Abandoned Personal Property, and to amend Chapter 6, Article 14 of the Code, titled Unclaimed Personal Property, and retitle as Disposition of Personal Property. Um, essentially, this amendment would allow the city to better address uh, our ability to return or dispose of personal property that is taken into the city's possession through various circumstances. Uh, and we do recommend approval. Um, Commander Osgood and Chief Mayor here to answer any de detailed questions you may have, as well as Mr. Hoffman, of course. Thank you. Discussion? Questions? Okay, please open the vote. The vote is open. Please vote. The vote is closed and CB 1887 passes unanimously. Thank you. Next is CB 1888. CB 1888, a bill for an ordinance amending Chapter 7, amending Chapter 9 by the addition of the new Article 17, and amending Chapter 14 by the addition of new Article 5 for the North Glen Municipal Code related to nuis nuisance abatement procedures. Move to approve. Second. Jim. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, we have one uh, staff memorandum uh, for two ordinances, so just going to cover them very briefly here. Uh, again, these relate to uh, amendments uh, to the Municipal Code as they relate to nuisance enforcement and then the abatement of nuisances. Uh, so there's a, a lot of different changes that were completed uh, in this draft, uh, largely in Article 11, Chapter 9, um, as well as uh, Chapter 7, 8, excuse me, 7, 9, and 14 by the addition of two new articles to the Municipal Code. 
Uh, and then there's a summary of all of those changes in a, a table in your staff memo. Uh, and we did discuss this uh, last week at a study session, and we've incorporated the changes that you had uh, recommended at that time. Uh, so Mr. Savot is here to answer any detailed questions you may have as well. Okay. Discussion? Questions? Okay. Please open the vote. Vote is open. Please vote. The vote is closed and CB 1888 passes unanimously. Okay, so the next one is CB 1889. CB 1889, a bill for an ordinance amending Article 11 of Chapter 9 of the North Glen Municipal Code related to nuisance abatement procedures. Move to approve. Second. Okay, Jim, you. No further comments. No further comments, okay. Questions or comments? Okay, please open the vote. Vote is open. Please vote. The vote is closed and CB 1889 passes unanimously. Thank you. Next is resolutions in CR 59. CR 59, a resolution approving a First Amendment to the inter Intergovernmental Cooperation Agreement between the City of North Glen and the North Glen Urban Renewal Authority. Move to approve. Second. Jim. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, again, this is a, a first amendment to the IGA uh, or intergovernmental cooperation agreement essentially between the city of Northland and the Northland Urban Renewal Authority. Uh, this amendment would streamline processes and transparency when installing city owned assets as the city will account for project expenditures within the city budget um, and then that would recognize the NURA contribution as revenue. So if there's a NURA project that would be uh, being advanced, uh, that would be the process we would follow, but then it would be subject to the city's procurement and contracting policy. Uh, so uh, the Neuro Board actually approved this First Amendment at their most recent meeting on May 10th, and uh, we recommend approval as well. And uh, Corey or I can answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Discussion? Kyle? Thank you, Mayor. Um, can you explain the, the revenue piece and how it's going to be, um, how the city is going to have to report that as revenue? I, I, I read that and I, and I heard and I don't quite understand it. Sure, I think the, the best comparison uh, I could make would be uh, like uh, outside agency funding of uh, say Adams County transportation tax. Uh, we would note that as a revenue source in our budget and then in the CIP uh, we would designate the specific projects that would be used, uh, that would use those funds. So very similar to what you see in the CIP now, it could say Adams County open space, uh, could say general fund, could say capital projects reserves, or it could say NURA now would be just another category of revenue we would receive for capital projects. So, so this, this revenue is going, is going to be for specific projects. It's not going to be revenue specific to our general fund or, or you know, that, that doesn't have it. It's dedicated to something. Correct, correct. And, and uh, um, again, Neuro would be doing, uh, implementing your plan. So with these quarterly meetings, you'd be jointly deciding those projects. They would just be the funding source, and this would be the way to account for it. Okay. Yeah, and the way, the way I would characterize it is when the city enters into a contract, there has to be a corresponding appropriation. And so this is when the city says we've appropriated the funds, the funds are the funds that are received from Neuro to do the project. Perfect. That's what I thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right, please open the vote. The vote is open. Please vote. And the vote closes with CR 59 passing unanimously. Thank you. And before we move on, Lisa, uh, can you tell us when the public hearings are yes, going to be? Yes, I missed reading? my cue. I'm sorry. That's okay. So I'd like to state for the record that the public hearings on CB 1887, 1888, and 1889 will be held on June 12, 2017 in City Hall Council Chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, we'll move on with the resolutions. Uh, the next one is CR 60. CR 60, a resolution accepting an Adams County Open Space Grant and approving the grant agreement between the City of Northland and the Adams County Board of County Commissioners. Move to approve. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mayor, our members of Council. Again, we have a one staff memo for two resolutions here, CR 60 and CR 61. Uh, and this would be to uh, approve the attached Adams County Open Space Grant agreements. Uh, we would do a separate 
appropriation later to receive those funds, but this grant agreement is the next step in the process right now. Uh, in the amount of $800,000 or 50% of the total project cost for outdoor aquatics improvements and up to $252,000 or 60% of the purchase price for park property acquisition. And uh, more specifically, uh, the outdoor aquatics improvements are the Kiwanis Pool that is being planned in the CIP right now. And then the park property acquisition was the property formerly known as the, the Barry property, uh, which we were calling Justice Center West Park now, uh, as a working title at least, until we get something figured out. Okay, great. Discussion. We recommend approval. Thank you. Discussion? Hearing none, please open the vote. The vote is open. Please vote. And the vote closes with CR 60 passing unanimously. Next is CR 61. CR 61, a resolution accepting an Adams County Open Space Grant and approving the grant agreement between the City of Northland and the Adams County Board of County Commissioners. Move to approve. Second. Second. Jim, you have any? No further comments. Thank you. Discussion? Yes, Kyle. Mayor, if I may, um, I would just like to thank staff. I think that they put a lot of work into this, and it's a, a large grants that we got for these projects, which um, Correct me if I'm wrong, Amanda, did we get some of the larger grants of the projects or of, of the available grants or the grants that were given out? Is that correct? Good evening, Mayor and Council. There were some very large grants given out. I believe the largest one was about $2 million this time, but this is the largest single grant we've received from Adams County, at least in the last 10 years or so. So I, I think it, staff did a great job, and um, I think that uh, it showed a lot of uh, I guess, I don't know another word to think of, regionalism or, or whatever you want to call it to work with the county to, to get stuff like this done. So thank you very much and, and thank you to the county for letting us uh, bring these amenities to our community. I think it's going to be great. Right. Thank you. So. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Hearing none, please open the vote. The vote is open. Please vote. And the vote closes with one no vote cast by Council Member Snetzinger. Okay. Next is CR 62. CR 62, a resolution approving an amendment to the intergovernmental inter agreement between the City of North Glen and the Urban Drainage and Flood Control District regarding the Grange Hall Creek Improvements Project. Move to approve. Second. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, I'm going to try to summarize this. this complicated financing structure that we've got um, with this this project here and David can uh, can answer any additional questions you may have but uh, this is a uh, an amendment to an IGA that we would be doing with the urban drainage so every time we do a new project we essentially do an IGA like this and so on the second page of the memo there's a, a history of recent IGA amendments and some of the projects that we've done with them um, this is going to provide funds to undertake construction of phase 1b of Grange Hall Creek uh, which is the Washington Street Larson Drive improvements also allow for some creek channel repairs due to a failed storm drain pipe in Grange Hall Creek which is below Marion Street so further to the east. Um, 1.3 million is currently identified in the 2017 stormwater CIP uh, for the funding of the construction of the Larson Drive improvement. We're proposing an additional 160,000 from the capital projects fund reserve uh, to be added to the project to cover the repairs on Marion Street. Um, so this would include construction costs, landscaping, engineering oversight, et cetera. Both projects are currently estimated at 1.77 million. Um, and so the funding available from the joint account that we have with Urban Drainage is 328,000. With our addition of 1.46 million, brings the total project for final engineering and construction costs around 1.78, 1.79 million. So uh, with that, we do recommend approval of this resolution, which would amend the IGA, uh, and then that will enable us to proceed with the design and construction of those, those projects. Okay. Discussion? Yes. Um, David, I'm wondering if you could maybe address this. Um, I know over the past few years I've had a few residents on Marion Street that have had issues with um, flooding, and I'm thinking this project is actually different from what they've been complaining about, where they're complaining about runoff coming down the hill from 104th. Um, this has nothing to do to mitigate any of that, right? Yeah, this is this is totally different. This is just the drainage in Grange Hall, not the runoff that gets the drainage call from the side streets right there. Yeah, so it won't do anything to alleviate any of that issue? Okay. okay. 
Right, and this and this has been planned for many years, though. Uh, the whole reach has been planned for many years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, just to elaborate a little bit on the Marion Street issue, that's been a thorn on our side for a number of years. It's failed twice, and um, we've repaired it in-house. And the, it's, it's an old corrugated metal pipe, and it's very difficult to repair. In fact, impossible to repair now. So. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, temporary design for about 500 feet of pipe at $235,000 and um, finally approached uh, Urban Drainage when this project was coming up and they um, very uh, graciously uh, allowed us to put this in the project even though it wasn't uh, on a due date, it required just a little bit extra funding. Uh, so we believe this staff is a, is a good deal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any, any other discussion? Yeah. So how much turmoil will there be going on in that neighborhood when you're doing the work? Uh, there shouldn't be too much turmoil to come off Marion Street. There's a, it's a fairly large open space there, but I mean, any open channel uh, is, uh, there's lots of earth moving and things like that. I think there's four or five drop structures that'll have to be built in there, and uh, you know, we'll make sure with the right of way permit they'll clean up when they come out with their heavy equipment and have a tracking pad there. So hopefully that will minimize any kind of impact on the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Open the boat. The boat is open. Please vote. And the vote closes with CR 62 passing unanimously. Thank you. Next is CR 63. CR 63, a resolution approving an agreement between the City of Northland and USA Construction, Inc. for the water treatment plant filter media replacement project. Move to approve. Second. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, again, this is a resolution to approve a contract for the uh, water treatment plant filter media replacement, CIP. Uh, again, there's eight mixed or, uh, media filters in the uh, that capture the fine particulates in the treatment process. So this would be replacing two of them. Um, the, the four layers and how they work are described in, in the memo. I uh, just want to mention the procurement real, real quick. On April 11th, we did get three bids. Uh, the low bid from USA Construction was checked for completeness. Um, and the city has done work with that contractor in the past. Um, and so we are recommending approval of the resolution, uh, which would authorize the mayor to execute a contract between the city of Northland and USA Construction for the water treatment plant filter media replacement project in the amount of $126,750, and then authorize the city manager to approve changes in the scope of work uh, up to the approved expenditure limit of $139,425. And uh, David is here to answer any questions you may have as well. Thank you. Discussion? Yes. Yeah, just one clarification. So this is for two of the eight filters. Are the other ones going to need to be replaced soon as well? As David's walking up, I'll say yes, but they're on a <coughs> on a schedule. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that, I, that's exactly right. We did two last year, and they're fairly expensive, as you can see. So we just we rotate them through two at a time. Okay. Any other discussion? Please open the vote. The vote is open. And the vote closes with CR 63 passing unanimously. Thank you. Next is CR 64. CR 64, a resolution approving an agreement between the City of North Glen and Integrated Site Services Incorporated for the citywide fence maintenance project. Move to approve. Second. Jim. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, we're seeking the approval of a contract with the Integrated Site Services in an amount of 160000 That's a not-to-exceed amount to repair, clean, and stain city-owned arterial fencing. Uh, we have over 30,000 linear feet of arterial fencing in the, in the city, and the last time we did this work was in 2009. Uh, so we did get two formal bids. Uh, one was a bid of 174000 uh, from... Uh, integrated site services, and then another bid was uh, close to $400,000. Uh, one of the, the um, items in this bid is that um, we looked at the fence posts and pickets, and as part of this, they would be doing repair and replacement of those things. And we believe that there'd be no more than 2% of the posts and no more than 5% of the pickets would need to be replaced uh, during this work. Uh, and so we've negotiated this down that the cleaning and staining would be $109,000 of the contract, and then the balance would be essentially an allowance for picket and 
post repairs. So the total not to exceed 160,000. And again, um, those would be as needed and approved by staff as well. So it wouldn't just be a, a free reign to go out and replace. Uh, so we do recommend approval of the, uh, of the contract of the resolution and uh, Amanda's here to answer any questions you may have to. Thank why, you. why the the big difference in pricing? Is it a workload issue or? I, I know Amanda has experience with the prior contractor, so I'll let her articulate that. Um, we don't have a, I can't tell you for certain why that price is that much higher, but I will say the previous contractor's last several prices on items have been significantly higher than we would expect. Um, in addition, they've been the only bidder on several recent fence pro projects. Okay, it sounds like they're busy. Okay, any other discussion? Yes, Kyle. Thank you, Mayor. Um, can you tell me, I, I, and I'm just curious, and maybe this is just me not knowing, do we have a, a timeline on when this should be done? Is it every eight years? Or is or, or kind of what's the plan? So this is the first time, or in 2009, it was the first time the fences had ever been cleaned, stained, and sealed since their installation. They were originally not stained or sealed. Um, when we did that project in 2009, we assumed a five to eight year cycle. I pushed it. We probably pushed it about a year longer than we should have. Um, no deterioration of the wood, but um, aesthetically, you can see the fading of the stain. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and then another question I have is, is there's quite a bit of brickwork that goes along with our city fences where the where the ends are. Um, do we have any issues with those? And is that uh, when are those looked at? And, and how are those not incorporated into this project ever? So there's know? no ongoing maintenance um, on those brick pillars at this point. Um, it, unfortunately, the time we repair them the most is when a car runs into them. Um, it amazes me how often that happens. Um, and so we replace or repair through a on-call contract if that happens. So as time goes on, are, are those going to start to be included in, in the analysis of the fence or is it just going to stay just looking at the wood? At some point we may need to include them. At this point they're not showing any deterioration. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Thank you. Please open the vote. The vote is open. Please vote. And the vote is closed. CR 64 passes unanimously. Thank you. Next, we'll move into discussion items. And the first one, David, is for the Ralston House update. Mayor and Council Members, I, I'm Regret to inform you, I think most of you know that we didn't get the Dole grant. So, um, anybody's speculation, but I think generally, I think we, we as staff believe that uh, the board probably thought that the cities could contribute all of the money for this. Um, we're not resting at this particular point, though. Um, um, we're going to meet again, the jurisdicts are going meet, to meet again on June 6th and come up with hopefully a strategy to revise the I, IGA and get this, get this project paid for. The Rawson House has also applied for, to the uh, Gates Foundation for $150,000 as well. And, and they were out a while back, uh, Gates Foundation people looking at the facility. So we're still uh, hopeful to move forward here uh, when we get full funding. Um, and uh, I'll let you know as soon as, as soon as things progress in that fashion. We certainly expect that they will. And I believe the Ralston House is also looking at the Betcher Foundation and yep. um, is it El Pomar? El, El Pomar, that's yeah. right. Uh, is, and they did receive a grant for, I believe it was either five or six thousand dollars the other day, too. Um, so they are pushing forward. They're trying to, you know, fill in the gap. But definitely it was a shock, you know, that we didn't get that money. So, so as, as soon as we get a full appropriation, we'll, we'll get that get that bid out on the street. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next. Uh, oh, what, yeah, sure. Kyle. Um, so the question I have is, is I, I definitely appreciate all the grants that are being applied for. I'm just concerned, is the uh, applying for these grants, is it slowing down the potential construction rather than saying, going back to the cities and saying, let's just chip in the remaining amount? Because um, I see that, that with the gates, it, we won't find out until June 30th. And then if we go back to El Pomar, go back to Betcher, which don't get me wrong, I, I totally understand and, and it makes sense, but at the same time, 
is, does that slow down our construction? Well, I think, you know, I'll let Jim talk too, but I think we're doing this on a parallel path. I mean, it was extremely difficult. I mean, you know, I, Jim May and myself have been working on this for three years, and when Jim came on board, um, we really pushed hard and got the jurisdictions to agree on the second, second IG as it is. So I, I don't expect to get, um, I don't expect that to, to go easily. So we're working on a parallel process, and hopefully the jurisdictions can come up with the rest of the money. In fact, some of the jurisdictions have appropriated their full share. So um, I, I think the fav we're, we're, you know, the odds are in our favor, but at the same time, I think you know, the Gates Foundation could, um, if we got that grant or any other grants, it could be for furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and things like that, uh, maybe particular ongoing operational costs. So I think the grant applications are a necessary uh, parallel uh, process to go on with this. It, just to add to that, one of the, the things that we had in the phase two of the IGA, um, not just that every community was putting in 75%, but specifically they wanted net 30 billing terms, um, and they basically had us write in there that if we didn't have all of the funds, we couldn't go and procure a construction contract, which makes sense. Um, so what I'm going to be proposing to the groups in a, in a couple weeks here is that we continue with our site prep, which is not stopping. We're still moving the generator and the evidence building, et cetera. Um, but then if we get some reception from the other communities, we might try to get a final bid on the actual construction. Uh, which would require us to finish the plans, get the bids sent out, or get the RFP sent out, and then we'd actually have a hard number that all those communities would know what their final share would be. Um, and then that would enable Mr. Mosley with Ralston House to go and get grants for, as David said, the FF&E, what would be just over the capital construction price. Okay. So we're trying to keep, like David said, we're trying to keep it going, parallel track, keep things moving, absolutely. And we did have that discussion at, at the Adams County breakfast the other morning. And all of the jurisdictions that were there, even though it wasn't a formal vote by any means, they were all very supportive and looking forward to the meeting that you're going to be having. So I know Westminster spoke up right away. Um, Brighton did also. Uh, Thornton wasn't there. So, but anyway, um, I, think it's, I don't think we'll have hopefully too many issues with that. And so the F so the FFE is not including that 1.7 million dollar price tag. Is that's there an estimation on what that's going to be, and, and um, is that going to be the response? If you don't get a grant fund, will that be the responsibility of the uh, of the municipalities involved in the IGA? Uh, it could be. Uh, you know, I think the Ralston House themselves have they have they they have access to I think uh, other other sources of furniture and fixtures. I mean, it'd be nice to get them new new, new equipment, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we, when we get to it. But uh, I don't I don't have the exact estimate for furniture fixtures equipment if we we're going to purchase all new. I don't have that figure right tonight. Okay. I I, I would add that um, when the Dola grant was submitted, it was for four hundred fifty thousand, and the gap is three hundred fifty seven thousand. So kind of as a working number they were using around a hundred thousand but it might be more than that for ff and e but that was kind of the working number so far perfect thank you okay anyone else all right david next we have the uh, justice center okay well the, the biggest help is if i could have it stop raining at the moment <laughs> that would be awesome <laughs> if you have anything you can do while, i don't think you know <laughs> been away for about 10 days and it was raining back on the east coast and I come back to rain and hail here too so I don't, I don't know if it's following me around the country or what. <laughs> uh, up until uh, we got into a rainy spell here the contractors have been made great progress we got 129 caissons in and all, of course all the overlot uh, rough grading has been in put in a rough uh, detention pond put in uh, they've I uh, got, uh, I would say, probably half of their grade beams in, and that's the big beam that goes around the perimeter of the building where the, where the walls and form systems are on. Uh, so um, they uh, didn't work Saturday, Friday, or, or, or Thursday last week, and I assume they weren't working much today either. So uh, you get a soaking rain like this, it'll be uh, three, two or three, four days, and unless the sun comes out really strongly to dry it out. So I'm, we're just sitting and waiting. and. Um, a contractor has a certain amount of float built in for weather uh, weather issues, and we're not in jeopardy of exceeding that at this point. But I would sure like to see the sun come out. Um, so, if there's no questions, I got one other thing I, I'd like to present to council tonight. We, uh, Are there any questions? I kind of do have one. Yeah. Okay, uh, so it's Becky. I got a request from one of my um, one of my peeps, as I like to call them, about flying their drone over the justice center so that they can. You know, 
be above it. Look at Corey. <laughs> and, you know, what are the rules around that? Can they do that or? Well, I, is that a sidebar I, I, conversation? I don't, the, I don't know what the rules are. I would say it would be kind of a distraction to the site work if, if that were to happen. I, I'd prefer it not to happen. But hey, I'll make that not happen for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We Any do have a live camera feed, so if anybody wants to watch it, they can I told them that. Kyle? I just have two questions, Mayor. Um, first, have we gotten any complaints from any of the neighboring um, houses about any construction issues, or has that been... Has the city gotten any, um, any calls? There was one complaint for the neighbor on the east side of Acoma because we started the utility work there, and I, I think they wanted to move a boat or a camper back into the site or out of the site. We delayed for a couple days so, so they could do that, um, and they were happy about that. But I, I don't know of any other uh, real, any, real com complaints at this time. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then maybe this is more for Jim, but. Uh, how often or, or do we know how the camera is being utilized, how many visits or how many people have gone to actually see? I, I checked with, with Bob and Margo on that both and um, it's, we, can, we can track the number of clicks to the Justice Center website, but then when you leave that site it's a third party webcam, we have no way of tracking that. So we can definitely report on how many hits we've had on the Justice Center website or page on our website. Um, but then the next click through, we're not, we wouldn't be able to track that. Okay. But I can get you the number on what we've got so far okay. on that. Hey, anyone else? David, you had something yeah, else? Yeah, I got one, one more thing. <laughs> I saw what it was. <laughs> so at FCI was kind of going to buy my office this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the extra security, Chief. Appreciate it. I didn't do a very good job on the one that was the site. A couple of those disappeared. Did they? <laughs> so that was me. So that means I'll have two. So I have a question for you. Um, at the groundbreaking, we were told to go ahead and take those with us and that there would be a plaque that we could apply for those. What would you like with those shuffles? What would you like us to do with them? Oh, we found if, you, if you want to just let me know where they are, drop them at the city hall. I'll make sure they get back. Anonymously. Just, just <laughs> drop them back. Well, I can tell you off how many of us have had them. Maybe the fire safety and the blanket. Or yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> the, these are much better shovels. The the, 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 uh, the North Glen, it's engra engraved into the shovel, so you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate it. But I wanted my helmet too. Well, I can get your helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I need that. Trust me. All right. Any else? Right. Thank <laughs> Thanks, David. All right. Um, next we have um, RTD N line. Larry, I know you're here. And uh, David Gardner. <laughs> I'm, I'm just turning on the uh, projectors. So. All right. I was one of okay. those. Mayor, I'm just going to have Ashlyn present for us. That works for me. Unless you have questions later for me. Right, right. And Jim, did you want to say anything in between time or uh, what uh, you're saying? Uh, uh, yeah, I would just introduce it very, very briefly. Um, so uh, we, we've got Larry Hoare and Ashlyn Vaughn here tonight. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, your name from? Lin Lindsay Smith, also from, from RTD uh, and their communications group. Uh, we, uh, you, you, of course, got the news that the end line is delayed. Uh, there was a press release a few weeks ago. We sent that out to all of council. Um, I know there was an elected officials briefing uh, with a lot of communities last Thursday. And so uh, we wanted to have them come in and just make a presentation and uh, answer your questions and give you an update directly. Thank so. you. Thank you, Mayor, Ashley. Council members. Uh, as stated, I'm Ashlyn Vaughn. I'm the project manager for the Regional Transportation District and give you a brief presentation and then hopefully answer any of your questions. So thanks for having me this evening. Uh, real quickly, uh, what is the inline? Um, for those of you who uh, aren't uh, in the weeds like me every day, uh, it's overall it's 18 and a half miles from Denver Union Station up to Highway 7. Uh, right now, we've got 13 of those miles under construction. Uh, it is electrified commuter rail, so similar to the University of Colorado A-Line uh, B and G. Uh, total, there are eight stations. Uh, six of those are under construction. Uh, when it's said and done, we'll have 20-minute peak headways, 30-minute off-peak headways. So that means if you're there at a platform during rush hour, every 20 minutes a train will come by. Off-peak hours, about every 30 minutes. 
Uh, travel time from 124th down to Union Station will be about 27 minutes. And one thing to point out is uh, it is mainly single track with passing tracks. And I can get into that a little bit later as we show some pictures. Um, and I think everybody knows it goes from Denver through Commerce City, uh, Thornton, and of course, of course North Glen and parts of unincorporated Adams County. Uh, a little bit of background, as I mentioned, uh, right now it's funded to 124th with uh, plans to go to Highway 7 as soon as we can identify funds to do so. Uh, back in December of 2013, we awarded the contract from Denver Union Station to 124th to Regional Rail Partners, and that's a joint venture of Graham Contracting and Balfour Beatty Rail. Uh, and back at that time, substantial completion was scheduled for 2018. And we can again talk a bit about that as we've uh, now um, been provided with Regional Rail Partners' updated schedule, and we look at some of the conflicting uh, sequencing, some of the challenges we've got with design reviews, third-party approvals, uh, realizing that 2018 is really not a realistic goal. So we wanted to bring that out to you, be public, transparent about that, uh, and talk about uh, what we can do to mitigate uh, and when we can get it completed. So one thing to point out is this is a design-build contract, which has its own uh, delivery challenges, but also has some benefits. One of the things as an owner in a design build, we have to be very careful about what we do. A lot of the onus, uh, that transfer of risk goes to the design builder. That's one of the things we're paying for. Uh, they design it, they build it, they take a lot of that responsibility on. So what does RTD do in that process? We monitor the construction and design schedule, as we've you know, noticed and became alarmed at a certain point and said, hey, this is a real issue. We need to get this out to the public. Um, we're also in there looking at the quality of the work, both design and construction, uh, making comments. We don't necessarily do that for third parties, you know, as say North Glen or the railroad takes a look at the plans. It's uh, their job to comment on their facilities. We, we do that to some extent in the background, but uh, again, we're not micromanaging or directing uh, RRP how to get to their milestones. So again, um, it is RRP who's uh, primarily responsible for the design and construction schedule, and uh, they are also responsible primarily for the quality of work where there is a quality assurance kind of oversight role. Um, again, what happens there if, if we start to direct the contractor and telling them their means and methods, we start to step in and assume that risk that we're paying them uh, to take on. So that's where it becomes uh, somewhat of a uh, you know a fine line that I have to walk with my staff. Uh, right now, what are we doing to, to try to figure out what that can project, project completion date looks like? We are working with RRP to develop that new schedule, seeing what steps it takes to get there. We've asked for a recovery schedule. We've also asked for what's called a mitigation schedule. I'll talk about that in just a second. We are helping uh, providing a greater level of guidance on how to deliver that schedule. We're looking at things like extended work weeks, extended hours, uh, working six, seven day weeks. What if we work a night shift? What if we work a morning shift? Uh, that type of thing. We're also working with the Burlington Northern Santa Fe, who is the railroad down on the southern end of the project, which is really the, it's kind of the bottleneck right now with our design. We still have two key areas right near the Denver, uh, the stock show complex, basically. It's a very tight, constrained area. A lot of walls going in there, a lot of track work. That's where a platform is, is going as well. So we're, we're working with not only regional rail partner and their designer, but also BN to get that kind of critical piece, the, uh, the critical path, so to speak, uh, identified. Um, but we're also holding RRP accountable for their responsibilities. Um, just like RTD, there are partners, uh, we're responsible and they're accountable as well. So we're taking all the steps that we can under the contract. We're issuing non-conformances, we're issuing corrective actions, we withhold money for certain things, uh, and in some cases we're escalating items up through my management all the way up to uh, Dave Genova, our general manager. And in one case, we're actually uh, pursuing uh, litigation. So we're really working on, on all levels. We are trying to be collaborative with our contractor, but we're also uh, holding them accountable as well. Um, one thing I would like to point out, uh, I think everybody is fairly well aware of some of the challenges we're having on the University of Colorado A-Line associated with the gates. And one thing I wanted to, to point out is that this time extension is not related uh, to those issues that we're having over on the, the University of Colorado A-Line, uh, even though we will be operating the same system and the same type of equipment. So everything you see out there on the A and G lines uh, will be very similar uh, from an operational standpoint of what we're building on North Metro. 
So what we're doing, uh, we're really trying to take those lessons learned and move them forward into our project so that when we do get to that testing phase uh, that we hope to see sooner rather than later, uh, we won't be running into those types of challenges. Um, what are some of those? And I'll show you pictures of these because this is, this is some jargon that, that might not mean much to you. Um, we are taking those lessons learned. I, I like to think of each crossing as a computer. I mean, there's hardware and there's software associated with that. So we're looking at hardware improvements as well, well as the software improvements that are going into that, but also some of those physical constraints out there. Um, we don't have what's called quad gates. Uh, that actually greatly simplifies some of these crossings, and I'll show you a picture of that and what that means. We're able to design those out. Um, and also we, uh, up here uh, from 72nd North, where we acquired the Union Pacific Boulder Industrial Lead, we don't have any adjacent freight tracks. Uh, that's what we have on the G line and the University of Colorado A line. Uh, we have freight corridor right next to us, and you'll see, uh, I'll show you some of the complications that that, uh, that brings into the mix. And by that, we also don't have as complex geometry from a roadway standpoint. So here you go uh, at the Monaco crossing on the A line. Uh, the, the commuter rail lines are the two down to the south. Uh, we have freight traffic up to the north. There has to be a 50-foot separation as required by the, the uh, in this case, it's the Union Pacific. So we've got quad gates. We've got these frontage roads. We have uh, integrated traffic signals. And you can look at this, the sheer width of that crossing. It's almost 150 feet across. That includes uh, some timing delays. So you roll all that up and you have a, a much more complex and challenging crossing that you have to deal with. Uh, as we have our accurate crossings in Thornton and North Glen, uh, far simpler geometry, and I'll, I'll show you a picture of that. So here's what it looks like from ground level. A little hard to see all the details in there, but uh, if you're out there and you're, and you're sitting at one of these intersections, you can, you can just look at all the different traffic signals, the train signals, and see the, the complexity that's involved there. So here is 112th, uh, to get you oriented, the, the two kind of lines going north-south. Those are the uh, commuter rail lines. And what we have instead of the quad gates is we have dual gates with a median. So um, right here, this is represents a median. Same thing on the uh, west side. And we've just got a single gate in the direction of traffic. And in this particular case, no integrated traffic signals, no adjacent freight, a much smaller crossing, uh, makes things a lot easier to test uh, in the long run. And that's what 112th looks like today. It'll look somewhat similar to that. Uh, it'll go up to, there'll be two commuter rail train uh, tracks right there uh, in the uh, in condition. But, uh, and the medians will go in. But again, a far simpler looking crossing than that picture of Monaco, what you saw. And now I'd like to, to talk about some progress uh, that we are making. Uh, what I did was we uh, decided to just kind of tailor this for uh, kind of the uh, northern crowd. So we've got 124th down to about 104th, and that's what we'll talk about. If you'd like to see some other progress pictures, uh, just let me know. We can uh, certainly get those to you. So uh, what we've done is a little bit of time-lapse photos, um, and we actually do have a drone, so we have some uh, great drone shots. Um, uh, in some areas, some areas we can't fly it, but uh, when we can, uh, so a few of these are, uh, are some aerials that uh, are, are pretty neat shots. Um, here, you see the 124th station. We've got what you call skeleton rail, um, and the, the platforms are what you see on either side. Uh, the railing is up there from a protection standpoint, so they'll be uh, pouring the platform tops as soon as this rail gets to final elevation. Canopies are up, but you can kind of see a lot of progress made between January and May. Um, you know, I'm with uh, Mr. Willett. I'd, I'd love to see it stop raining. I mean, we had a beautiful winter to get a lot of work done, but uh, uh, we'd like to be out there right now. But uh, the nice thing is with track work, you can actually work on the track in the rain. Uh, some of the concrete work and the dirt work, not so much, but when you're on the rail, you can actually uh, work out there. Uh, here's a great shot um, from 120th Avenue Bridge looking south down towards 112th, you can kind of see uh, Denver down in the haze in the distance. Um, and what I'll point out here at this particular, for between March and May, um, we've got our skeleton track right here. Over here it's been flooded with ballast. You can see uh, one thing that's amazing uh, to me when I started doing this about 25 years ago is how flexible this rail is. You can kind of see the, the wiggles and bumps in it. Uh, what will come in now is we'll regulate, tamp, and actually set final <coughs> elevation. Uh, you can also see we've got, uh, they're a little harder to pick up, but they're the cantilever arms and they're, they're tied over to the side uh, that weren't in here in March. So that is the uh, next step in our overhead catenary system that delivers 
uh, it carries our signals, but also our uh, overhead power that tr powers the trains. So that is ready to actually string our overhead wires on. We'll be doing that uh, next month. Um, here's another shot uh, looking north from the 112th station. This is uh, right where we go from double track into single track into the station. In that skeleton track and a, uh, what they call a frog, which is apparently because this little thing right here looks like a frog on the dissecting table. And then here we are at 112th. Uh, you can see this is going to be the station platform. Hasn't really progressed yet because uh, in here in March we've got to put the rail on there. We flood the ballast here and then we set that. And because of the tight tolerances with uh, ADA compliance, we actually set the top of platform based on the top of rail. So the rail goes in first and then we set our concrete uh, platform top uh, based on that uh, rail profile. Another shot of uh, skeleton rail there at 112th and some uh, guideway fencing going in the background. When you say flood the ballast, you mean you're just filling, you're filling in the hole? Yes, yeah, sorry, a little terminology. Filling yeah, in we're, the gaps. we're just, yeah, so where that skeleton track's laying. That'll all be filled in with rock. You bet. So that's, that's okay. a, a kind of a base course that it gets set on. Then we dump an entire load of ballast on there, and then the regulator and the tamper comes in and we sets the final rail profile. Yeah, great question. Sorry for that. Um, I always like to joke, uh, most of our projects are actually drainage projects with some rail sprinkled on top. So uh, that's certainly the case on the uh, inline. Uh, here's a great shot of uh, uh, Grange Hall, and you can kind of get an idea of just the size of that. I think that might be a 102 inch or a 98. And that brings us down to 104th. Uh, this is a good shot of what's called direct fixation on all of our bridges. We don't use ballast, we actually directly affix the rail to the bridge deck that actually saves on weight. Uh, it's, it's far less than, than filling that thing up with rock. So you can <coughs> see uh, basically January, we've got the, the bridge deck poured. Here we are pouring and setting the plinths, which is kind of a top-down construction that's fairly tricky. And then here you see the rail is, is ready to get fastened uh, by the fasteners that are, are being attached over here to the plinth. So I think that ends our uh, kind of progress photos. I, I chopped it off there because I knew there'd be a lot of questions as, as far as just where we are with the schedule and, and some of those other uh, you know, possible financial questions. So I, I think I'll just uh, open it up to whatever you'd like to ask. Okay, questions? Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you guys for coming out. I really do appreciate it and I appreciate you guys giving us an update on kind of what's going on. Um, one thing that I can't get over though is that you talked about partnerships tonight. You talked about the partnership that you have with IRP and you talked about accountability. Um, and our residents in our city is part of that partnership. And so, um, and, and, and when you talk about accountability, I feel like there has to be an accountability from the residents to you all as well. Our residents have paid for this, for this rail line and continue to pay for it with their tax dollars. And they were promised a product. And now that product's not going to be delivered. Um, and that's unacceptable. Uh, and so that's, that's one of the first things I want to get out is, um, is that uh, you go to RTDs, and, and I, I've, I've been looking all over your website, and you look at the light rail lines and the fast track lines all over the metro area. And it seems like every other, every other city and every other part of the metro area has a line except us. And, and our community in, in the north here is extremely excited to get this in line, even though it's not going to where we had originally wanted, Highway 7, we're still excited about it. And now we get news that it's going to be delayed. And we get news that it's gonna be delayed without even knowing when, the, when, when it's going to be open. Um, and, and the more research I do, the more, the, the tougher time I have wrapping my head around it. I, I, I hear this contract that you guys signed with RRP, and, um, and to be honest with you, I, I don't care whose fault it is, I just want the line done for our residents. Um, but to sign a contract saying that you can't micromanage or offer any solutions to a company um, when something goes wrong, I, I, as a resident, not even as a council person, um, I can't wrap my head around that. And I, I understand it's a unique public-private partnership that you all have, um, but that's still, uh, when things like this come up, I, I would hope that there was gonna there'd be something in, in place other than maybe litigation that RTD could have stepped in and said, no, let's keep this on track or done something. And so that's disappointing. Um, I, have, uh, I have multiple questions, but the first question I'd like to ask, and then I, I'll let everyone else talk and, and come back to me, is I, I just wanna know when it's gonna be open. 
what's the schedule? Um, because I, I still can't find it and I didn't hear anything tonight. Um, and this started off as, as opening in January of 18 to, and then it, it got pushed back to the end of 18 and now we have no idea when. And so I, I'd, like to, I'd like to have a, a date in place that we can go out and tell our residents that they can expect to have a light rail to be able to get downtown and, and to their jobs and, and to whatever else they want to do with that. No, I, and I fully agree with you on the accountability front. Um, one thing I'd like to just clear up uh, with the opening, the and I think we've got some terminology confusions with the contract, and so uh, RRP was to turn over what was called substantial completion to RRP or to RTD in January of 18. So then there was a three and a half month period until May until final completion. That's actually the time period we would turn it over to our operator to perform the system systems performance demonstration testing which is sometimes a four to six month period. Sometimes it's even longer as we've got with A-Line and, and the associated FRA waivers. But uh, so it, it was never to open in actual 2018. That was, it's kind of a, uh, a construction terminology of, uh, of you know, 95% complete, but a lot of times, you know, devil's in the detail in that last 5% getting it to a state at which we could turn over to DTO. So, or whomever might operate it. So I uh, just wanted to clear that up from, from when it was going to open. And, um, you know, again, I wish I could give you a definitive date as to when we are going to open. That's something that we're still working with RRP on from a standpoint of what does that mitigation schedule look like? Who's responsible? You know, that is one thing that RRP and RTD is going to have to discuss for, for many moons. But we're still moving forward to, to get things mitigated, bring it back as much as we can. So for me to like stand here before you and actually give you a date tonight, I'm afraid I can't do that. But I can tell you, uh, I'd, I'd like by the next elected officials briefing, sometime in the August time frame, to be able to give you a much better idea. One of, and one of the reasons behind that is we still need some key approvals from the uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe down on the southern end. So until I get those design approvals, it's hard for me to put together a construction schedule and sequence with RRP as to, okay, what is that end date? look like if I don't have a start date on, you know, my critical path associated with that. that that's so extremely that's, frustrating. Yes, I, I totally understand that. It's, it, it's even as more frustrating to me. All right. And, um, I'll just go down this way. Carol. Um, so my question would be, I don't understand how you didn't know about these problems when the design build you said was done in 2013 and why these problems arise now that are insurmountable at this point. I would have thought that the job was bid just like we bid out jobs and you know what's, like when you said, this kind of shocked me when you said north of 72nd there's no freight lines. Well there never have been. So you guys have had to know that the entire time you've been doing fast tracks. So now it's an issue. Those kinds of things are really frustrating to me. I understand and just to clarify that that's not an issue or a problem. That's a good thing. I mean that's actually uh, helps our crossings and there, there actually was a freight line, uh, there was Union Pacific was there and they had one customer uh, just south of 112th and we actually negotiated with Atlas Roofing to go to rubber tire service so that we could actually abandon uh, the, the UP line and have that all for ourselves which has made it uh, much simpler uh, in that stretch, so okay. that's I not really a problem. That, so yeah. I'm sorry that I misunderstood. Sure, no, I just sorry if that? I if I brought that across incorrectly. So, okay. um, and the thing is, you know, we have been aware of, of this, you know, not this magnitude of a problem uh, since about a, a little over a year and a half ago. We started to see this construction slipping, and uh, uh, kind of to add to Councilman's point, uh, we're not completely hand tied. We're in there. We are making decisions and and helping. You know, in some cases, I do step in and issue what are called contract directives uh, to point the uh, contractor in the right direction. I mean, we meet weekly with our stakeholders, uh, North Glen included, as well as the railroad, and we are constantly offering suggestions. We just have to be careful in how we couch that. So I, I don't want it to be misconstrued that we're not sitting there, you know, twiddling our thumbs doing nothing. We are definitely in there every day working with RRP or the BN or our stakeholders to solve problems, get things back on track. It's just that in the last several months, it's when this slippage had occurred that we saw it pushing past the 18 date. So, you know, these things had happened incrementally up to a point that we realized, okay, at this juncture, it had gone, you know, somewhat exponential, and we realized 18 is not going to work. We need to go out to the public, let them know, at least be transparent to say, 
we're not sure what it is, but 18 does not look good based on what we're seeing in our past performance and history with the contractor. So when you talk about withholding funds and then maybe litigation, I mean, are any of those things happening right now? And if you are considering litigation, what does that do to the timeline of this project? It, it really doesn't change it, and it's for specific uh, contractual performance. So it's one of those things that we have a disagreement on how the contract reads, and so we, uh, we basically take that specific item to court, and it really doesn't affect, it's basically been escalated, moved off our plate, and that will be something that gets decided and we'll work through from a commercial, uh, business manner uh, once the court rules on that. So it doesn't really affect the, uh, the schedule and how we move forward. Uh, as well as the, uh, and, and yes, to answer your second question, we are withholding funds for things that we find to be non-conforming or out of, uh, you know, out of the specifications. But not for not delivering per the schedule? Um, we can't do that yet. We do have a liquidated damage clause into our contract. However, it's not for a substantial sum. It's for about $300,000, and that would have to be exercised once that, you know, they haven't missed the date yet, even though it doesn't look like it. But once that date has been missed, that's when we could exercise the liquidated damages clause. In that project's budget is RRP is getting three hundred and seventy million dollars, roughly, right? Yes, that's and basically. And a liquidated damages fund of three hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Is that normal? Um, a lot of times, yes, on large kind of mega projects and public infrastructure, because. If, if it's much larger than that, a lot of times the bidders will say, and under an industry <coughs> review, they just add it to their bid price. So they just add the LDs to the bid price. That's per instance? Um, that's total. Really? Yes, sir. So it doesn't make a dent yeah, to them exactly. that they're not finishing. Yeah, the 300000 means Cur nothing to right. them. I'm, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, Currently, our liquidated damages clause is not a, a big step. The, right. the withholding so is much. So that you included it, but it's just like ink on paper. Right. Actually, the Mayor. percentage is, is the project is more So I would say, you know, overall, it's a good question. Um, overall, uh, we're at 53% of the total project. However, north of 104th, I'd say we're much closer, as you, you know, can see in those pictures. We're ready to string wire and start pulling comm cables. We're closer to 70% on the northern end of the project. It's that we've only been able to do the major bridge structures, and I, and I don't want to imply that nothing's been done in that southern section, uh, but right there we have gotten early release packages approved and have done all the major structures. So up to the Skyway, uh, the Washington Bridge, the South Platte uh, One Bridge, uh, the Nargo Bridge, so we've got our, our big bridge structures are in. It's a matter of getting the, the walls in between us and the railroad in place. So what's just pull pull a pull a year out of the sky? What would you what would you think would be a reasonable time? Um, right now, what I see as a reasonable time is is towards the end of nineteen. I mean, again, we've got some some work to do with our contractor and to to work on how we integrate our systems components into the maintenance facility because a lot of that infrastructure needs to be in place. But right now, what I'm seeing is is towards the end of nineteen. Okay, so let's. Continue on with Marcy. <clears throat> Sorry, so, Marcy. No, you're fine. So, um, my fellow council members might be a little bit more tactful than I am because this thing makes me boil. So, what area do you live in? Um, I actually live near Idaho Springs. Okay. So, you have no concept of how the traffic is here. And sure, you might commute here every once in a while and you might see it occasionally, but you have no idea what our residents stick to. And we're not your pet project from the south who have had this line. You act like this is the first RTD line that you've ever built. This isn't the first time you've come down the track. But you seem to like sit up here and talk about how the north is going to get it in 2019, and you don't seem to think that any of us are upset about it and pushing it. And then you talk about how you have $300,000 that you put to them as a penalty, which is a joke and a smack in the face. You have no idea. I would gladly put you up in our city manager's conference room so you can sit and watch the traffic up here. It's aggravating as hell. And I don't think RTD gets that. And you sit here and you blame it on somebody else. So then put RRP up here and let them sit in the traffic and see it. 
because I don't see the passion in you all to get it done. Furthermore, when you sat up here for your groundbreaking, you did say that it was going to be 2018. And all of your communication materials have said it. So you all need to get that clarified and fixed because you've repeatedly said that. And to that point, last month you had an RTD representative that was up here that gave no indication that there was a problem and proceeded to tell us that there was no issues on this line. So either the info wasn't passing down, but you've known for 18 months that you had a problem and you still didn't pass that along. So you waited until the heat was getting hot to say anything. And then you come to us and tell us that you don't have any, any idea when it's gonna be, but you're gonna guess at 2019. It's absolutely unacceptable. And because the North is not your South pet project, it aggravates me when you turn around and you talk about how you're gonna do other things down South. We are just as important. And I hope that message is getting across to you. Yes, Figure it out and get us to be your pet project. And I don't want to hear about 2019. Figure it out. Larry, did you want to say something? Yes, please. So Ashland is uh, very polite, but he works up here every day. So he does have, he is aware of the, the whole traffic issue. He's aware of it. He drives it every single day. So let's Maybe just get at the that. Right times. Let's just get that one out. Maybe of the at way. the right times. Then the rest of our TD. No, he works like here. regular. Okay, hours. so maybe one guy out of our TD gets to see it all the time. I live up here. Okay. I'm your. Well, show the passion, then. if you live up here, get your passion out there for the residents because you haven't had it. Can we maintain a little decorum? No, because that went away a while ago. For those of you that are new on the council, this is not the first time I've been here. Have we met uh, in this yes, position? Yes, we have. But Were you here four years ago? I absolutely was. Well, what I want to remind you of then is that we were telling you 2042. We are building a train. It's been hard your work. your first train. We're building a train for you and me. <coughs> we're building this train. It's been a lot of hard work. There's nobody on this project that's sloughing off. We meet with your staff constantly. Your staff is great, by the way. You have great staff. We've solved things like freight trains that were, it was right by your uh, neighbor, I think. <laughs> That's okay. This is not a game with us. We're working very hard at this. And we intend to continue to work hard. All of our projects right now are going to be focused on the North area. There was a lot of issues to get this to happen. It wasn't just me. There were county commissioners involved. There were city people involved. We all worked hard to get this done. Let me get the uh, public or uh, the elected officials <coughs> meeting. We talked about this has only got a two percent contingency in it, and I'll tell you why that is. Because we were going to build this to the stock show. To the stock show. Because we had that much <coughs> money, we could pull that one off. And then we got the unsolicited proposal that said for X amount, we can get it to Eastlake. So we'll probably be able to come up with that money. But we don't have the $30 million or the $20 million or the contingencies and things like that. So we have to do it carefully. We're working hard at it. To me, it's very important to spend our constituents, our taxpayers' money uh, effectively and efficiently. And that's what it's about. Um, I'm sorry I'm coming off so abrupt, but I've been putting up with this for six years, and everybody needs to know, we're getting a train. I'm so excited we're getting a train. Sure. Just an observation. Sorry. Just an observation. Sure. <clears throat> and, and I can understand because I also feel the same way. I'd like to be able to get to work in less than an hour, which is 18 miles away. That's me so, too. When this presentation, Ruby pictures, pretty pictures and everything, but what you told me during this was that um, the RRP, is that their name? Mm -hmm. They suck. That's what I took away from it. Um, you don't have money to finish it. You know, it seemed to me that there was a lot of, um, it's everybody else but us. You know, I understand that this project is going to take time and I understand being a project manager on a much lower scale, you know. I know about delays, but it just seems like this one has been a delay from the beginning. 
just from the beginning. Our residents are, are preparing, the lines are in there, I'm over in Ward 2, you know, we've got the lines, we've got the construction, and all we keep hearing to echo Marcy's comments is that it's delayed, it's delayed. So maybe, as Marcy said, perhaps if we had better communication, consistent and correct communication, and I understand that it can't be transparent at 100% level, I get that, but to have somebody here a month ago, I'm gonna agree with Marcy, it seems a little crazy that everything was perfect and then it fell apart two weeks later. We got the email that, you know, it had been postponed or extended out. Let's call it extended out. Um, <clears throat> it just doesn't make sense to me at all. And again, you know, it doesn't make sense to me that you have milestones built into the contract that you shared with us, but there's really no way to hold them accountable to those milestones. And from a business perspective, I, I kind of ashamed that Well, unfortunately, we are, we are where we are. I mean that that may and be we're shame, not saying on, you're not may be shame on us. I don't know, but this is where we're at. And you know, we had a, a scope or a, a delay creep, a little bit at a time. And we sat down and finally said, "Well, we need to be transparent. We need to let you know." And I would love to tell you when. In fact, uh, the uh, the timeline that uh, Ashlyn commented on, I was surprised. I don't think we've heard anybody ever say any time about what year it might even be finished. Um, it's a disappointment. You know, I've worked on this pretty hard and, and it's something I, I take great pride in and I'm an elected official just like you. Um, and it's with great sadness I tell you that I won't be on that first train as a director here. That's a, I, it's not that we don't want to get it done now, we just ran into some obstacles. Design build is really design approval build, and it's been the approval processes that have held things up. So I, I'm done. I just no, wanted that's, to. That's okay, but you know, for me, I keep hearing the word transparency, and and I know we meet quite a bit too, and we get updates. But I also heard in the presentation that it's been about a year and a half or 18 months since you started becoming aware of some issues. And I also know that you meet with Brooke and his staff constantly. And when I called him and I called the city manager, they had no idea this was going to happen. So that wasn't tr transparent because if, if it, we had transparency going on and you had been com uh, communicating with them, our staff would have known a long time ago. And I would have known a long time ago. It, 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 so I, think I, it I have issues. A day at a time. And all of a sudden, we were in a position where we had to let it out. It was just a day at a time. It's just one week, one day, one month, two months. And now we're in a position where that 2018 is, is just not going to happen. Yeah, because in the beginning, it was 2017, we were going to be doing the testing. In 20, and that's how it started. That's, this is what it was, testing in 2017, opening in 2018. That was the message that we received. Um, and now... I heard tonight that we were testing in 2018, and then moving on. So, um, but anyway, the, so the dates are are not um, jiving for me at all. You know, I, I was thinking as I was listening to Ashlyn, um, all of the projects we've done, and I'm not sure how we ended up with this one being on a. We started in 2014, right? Basically. Yeah. Sure. And we're we're going to complete in 2018. I was kind of surprised when I when I thought about that tonight. All of our other railroad lines have taken five years. They've all been five-year projects. There's only so much you can do and so fast you can do it. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how we got here. Maybe it was an over-aggressive uh, schedule by RRP, but we're here. And and that's why we're, we're here tonight, right now, is because we just wanted to let you know. You were the first mayor I called, by the way. Yes, I know you told me. <laughs> And what did I say to you? This you is were not, disappointed. Uh, and yeah. that people weren't going to be happy. Yeah. 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 Okay, Kyle, I know you did. Have, uh, yeah, I, had, I don't know if you wanted to make your way around. I don't know if Antonio had something. He I wanted. didn't see his hand. No. I haven't raised my hand yet. Okay. Good. So then I was going to go back this way. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I have several <laughs> questions, if I may, Ashlyn. Uh, it's my understanding that you were supposed to have your designs into the different entities within six months of the, of the project start. Is, is that right, roughly? Six months. I, I don't know what you would be basing that on. I mean, we've got a number of different uh, design categories. I mean, there might have been being a design build. I mean, you start off with drainage, track, structures, 
Uh, stations usually lag further behind that, so I, I, I don't so, believe we had design milestones that were six months. So out. designs are still outstanding, though. You haven't gotten all your designs in, and it's been almost thirty months. That's right? correct. Okay. Yeah, there's still some station areas that are going through the development review process. So, uh, but the the key is is we basically have two outstanding pieces on the southern end that are, you know, we're going through iterations with the railroad. Okay. So what, actually, what percentage sure. of the total system is fully approved for construction? I'd say, you know, 90%, 85. I think that's the question. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then I know that you're talking about your issues that you're running into down by the stock show and the rail yards and, and everything. Um, what assurances? Because obviously people talk and, and you know, uh, people start speculating, and especially when you see a delay like we're seeing with this inline. Um, that this line's even going to be completed as it's been promised, all the way from 124th down to the Union Station. I mean, what assurances do we have? I'm, and, and, you know, I'm hesitant to even have you say something because, you know, I don't know how that's going to change. But, um, I mean, do, I, do, do we have RTD's word here tonight that 100, from 124th all the way to Union Station, this line will be completed? What I can say is we've got the parent company guarantee with both of these entities, which is very much akin to a construction bond. So yes, we have the assurance. So it's a yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. And and you'll notice, I mean, I know there was some concern that perhaps a you know, northern section or some stations would get skipped or, you know, we wouldn't build out. I think what you can see is actually that's almost already built out. That area is already there. It's the that connection down on the southern end that we've got to get in place and get working on. And we've gotten, uh, you know, I, I hate to keep using the, the terminology, but A, B, C, and D are the areas that are in the railroad. A and B have been approved. We're looking for approval in uh, early June for C, and D should follow that. So we're very close. And, and another question I have, because it's my understanding that with this RRP contract, it's a, it was a, a design built, but then RRP is going to operate this line as well. Is that correct? Uh, that's, no. No, that's not. Who's going to operate the line? Right now, we're, we're still looking into that. We've got... Uh, uh, an alternate uh, procurement process that we were looking at, but also having uh, DTO, uh, the uh, operator for the A line, uh, looking at it and give us a price. Okay, so RRP will not be considered to be an operator for this line. No, they're they're just the design they're builder. The they're not an operator. Okay. And well, do they know that? Because that seemed like the hugest point of contention that they did not want to just be design build because the money was in the maintenance and operation. That's what I thought as well. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Well, I didn't make that up. So um, I just find that really interesting um, that you're saying that because um, their whole thing as far as finishing the line on time was that they wanted to do all of that. And with you holding that up, and maybe that's what you're litigating, I don't know. But um, that's an issue because it seems to me if you're just making them design build, they're going to have an issue with that. They didn't want that. They wanted it all. I'm, I'm not aware of that aspect. I mean, it, there are contractors yeah, always a design build. And, and then it, 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 it's also concerning because <laughs> the company that you say is running the A-line, obviously it's all over the news, the issues they're having with the A-line. And so, I mean, it, it's, it's not as comforting as, as you may think hearing that name thrown out either because um, I, I do. I go down York all the time to work, and so I get to deal with, um, I think it's York and Walnut, that crossing. Um, and it can be a nightmare sometimes, and, and we've seen it breaking down, and I'm not sure if that's operator, if that's construction issues or, or whatnot. I'm not, you know, I haven't gotten into that many details, but um, I'm, I'm just concerned. I want the north to, to get the best, and that's what I'm advocating up here for. I'm advocating for our residents and our communities to make sure that, that we are not going to get the short end of the stick. That's short end of the stick on construction, on opening date, and on operation. And so, um, I, I'm hoping that you all, and, and hopefully, I wish RRP was here tonight. Um, keep that in the in the forefront of your minds that that you know we have these expectations, and um, and I think from what you've heard tonight, I don't think we're going to settle for anything less. So, no, understood. And I'd just like to say that's also why we are you know investigating you know other options from an operation standpoint, and and taking those lessons learned that I mentioned be it construction or operation, and inputting them into the end line. Anyone else? Um, After Marcy. Okay, Marcy. So 
to clarify, did you tonight say that you all have never communicated that it was the line was opening 20 of 18? That yes. Okay. Do you manage the rtd-fasttracks.com website? I do not. Who, who who manages that? You know, I don't know. Oh, sure. Lindsay Smith, and I'm with the communications for um, N Line. So, who manages the rtd fasttracks.com site? My department. So, your department has put out there right now Phase 1 East Lake 124th Avenue under construction opening 2018. I apologize. I thought we have taken all of that down. We'll, we'll get on that right, right away. 2015. You all quoted in an article in the Denver Post, the North Metro Rail Line from Union Station through Adams County will open 2018. Was that published? Absolutely. 2015? Yes. Google it. Was it 2015? It was. Okay. Did you all say At that, that time, you we knew it was 2018 that. opening. Once you put it up there, it becomes fact. Sure. All right. Um, sure. Did you have your hand up? I just want to say in the end, I mean, it feels like you guys can come here and you can tell us what's wrong and we can't do anything about it and that's what's very frustrating on our end and I can't imagine that the other cities that are affected by the end line are taking it any better than we are. Um, all we do is go to events where we're told about the development that's coming north, oh my god, everything is, and you know it is. Um, and we still have fast tracks not coming now for another year and that's if you don't delay it further, which pardon our or my non-belief in what you're saying, but there really is part of that. So it's just frustrating. We have no leverage, and that's upsetting for the residents. So. And can I offer that um, we just published this, uh, the news uh, in our NLINE newsletter for those residents that do subscribe to our um, NLINE uh, facts and, and monthly updates. Um, so if there's any ward meetings or any public events that you would like our communication department to go to, um, we are more than happy to do so and have one-on-one -on -one conversations. But with there, there, there's no answers, though, because I get that same thing. There's no answers in there. And, and, and one of the things I've learned just being in office and just <coughs> Just living life is uh, somebody once told me that don't give me problems give me solutions sure. and and all we're hearing about is problems and we have no solutions and we have no idea when it's going to open and so uh, to speak about frustration that's even more frustrating because I got that same email that you're talking about yep. and Understood. there were no I'm answers. also a resident of up here too so yeah. I, I, um, I along with Larry Larry's my neighbor <laughs> essentially um, so I understand what you're all going there I understand what northern area people feel um, so I do feel what resonates um, as well uh, but we are building and I can't stress that enough and you say that um, you know we don't show the passion but we really are we're, we're building and we're there and we're out here <coughs> telling you all I'm sorry that we don't have a solution um, but I'd rather let you know if we don't have a solution and tell you now than have it wait two more years and say we're not gonna open in 2018 um, and we just we still, still don't have an answer so I, I'd rather get it out to you now and let you all know now than us waiting and then still not having a solution or coming up with a solution and then having it be, well, why didn't you tell us earlier? So I apologize. We, we are where, where we are, as Larry said. So how is the communication level going to be handled from now on as far as uh, are you going to be working with Rick's department? Um, weekly I mean we're going to get updates we're going to find out what's going to happen Absolutely. in a timely manner not 18 months later we'll work with it we'll continue to work with your staff on getting out information um, as we get it so in part of the frustration for me is because I've been working with this for a long time now um, we are the last line to be moving forward and being constructed and then all of a sudden um, an unsolicited uh, proposal comes in the south or over in Aurora and then things either slow down or stop and then you start putting all your efforts in the other areas and then uh, we get a response coming back here saying well you don't have the contacts of the rooftops or the businesses to support an unsolicited uh, proposal and so that's why they're getting it there but this and you're not getting it over here and so I have a lot of issues with that type of thing. And I know I'm, I'm not speaking alone, I'm the entire council, but, but the entire NADA group is very upset with what you're doing here. And I know that this isn't going to be um, very quiet very long. So I, you know, I don't know what your answer is, but I know that you shouldn't be looking at any other area 
um, looking at any other unsolicited proposals or anything else other until you get this done. Sure. This is it. So. So I can't say that I'm disappointed. Because I'm more of a, I'll believe it when I see it. So the bridge is up, all that stuff's, you know, going so far. When the train starts rolling across the bridge, then I'll believe that the day has come. But I think some of this, some of the animosity goes back to about four or six years ago when we were asked to give up $100 million so you guys could build an extension to the south, to the east, to go to Parker. Right. And I think it, it left kind of a sour taste in, in everybody's mouth, even though things changed and, and you didn't wind up taking that money from us to do that. But that's, that's you know, where I get them. That's where my disappointment is, is that, you know, that I think was when I first got on council is when that happened. And it immediately just, you know, stuck in my mind that, you know what, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I'm not going to let myself be disappointed because I don't believe all of it. Um, I'm happy that you went from 2042 to 2025 and then 2018, or 2017, 2018, 2019. I guess I have a different opinion than most people up here. I, I can live with 2019, but that's just me. But I'll believe it when I see it. Okay. So it was more of a comment than, or a statement than a uh, question. Okay. And Antonio. Yes. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for coming. It's been 18 months when I was elected to council, and this is the first that I see of of anybody let, giving us the bad news. You know, and uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm probably very involved in my community, and I can tell you now that my constituency is uh, very disappointed on the way this whole. 10 years has been handled coming to where we are now. Now, I'm new to council, but I'm not new to being a taxpayer, you know, and voting for this in line and all the other uh, taxes that came into RTD. You know, we, we've taken a beating here in the north uh, over the highways, over the railways, and uh, I think you just need to be more transparent. I won't, you know, say everything everybody else has said, even though I agree with them. But my experience has not been a positive one. But thank you for coming. Anybody thank you. Um, one thing I would offer, uh, I mean, I, I certainly didn't mean to try to shirk accountability or responsibility from an RTD standpoint. I mean, I'm the face of that, and that's why I'm here tonight uh, from North Metro. So, um, you know, one thing I'd, I'd just like to add, though, is, you know, RRP is there. They're a partner. It, like you say, it hasn't been a great one. It's not a great relationship. Uh, we are trying to make that work, but uh, you know we, we need to hold up the pressure and do what we are to keep them accountable as well. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like to offer to you know any of the staff or, or council or mayor, um, if you would like to get out and actually see things firsthand, and I could talk to you more about specifics, uh, exactly what's going on and where we've got challenges and those type of things. I'd be glad to get you out on the line and uh, you know show you just you know down on the ground what it's what's happening. You know, and I appreciate all the work everybody does, but um, you just can't, and I know RRP is, is a major issue here, you know, but I think there's fault everywhere is the issue. And we should probably have been made aware much sooner. And maybe there would be, you know, a point where we could say, you know, what can we do? I mean, you know, I think that's the frustration level. What can we do? Um, to make this better or move it along? And I guess that's a question for you. I think at the end of the day, we just deserve better. We deserve better than what we're getting and, and what we've gotten, like Antonio said, the last 10 years. And so. Improvements that we're making to the city, our plans moving forward are all incorporating, you know, the analog. You know, how, how do we make things um, easier for our residents to get there? Things mm. that we want to do that we're willing to put the money to, but I'm hesitant to do that because I don't, 
I have more faith in you than he does. But, you know, um, it's really frustrating. I'm being really nice. Um, it's really frustrating because we are trying to look at projects. We are trying to make things go better with our city. And personally, I would appreciate it if you would tie you know, a little tighter to the milestones because I understand that the, the um, RRP is a problem for you. But it's not for me. And I can go down there and I can look at the, the rails and all that good stuff and see the problems. But for, for Becky Brown, the resident of Northland, that's not my problem. You guys should have been on it from the top, from the start. But I'm not going to yell at you anymore. Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to date Kim? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, number one, I do want to say thank you for coming out and sitting here in front of the firing squad and taking it pretty well. Um, as you can tell, we're all passionate about our community and what's right for our community and for our residents, and we fight for that almost every single day. We want our residents to have the great things that everybody else has had. So it is very disappointing. It's very, very tough to sit up here and then have to go back to our residents and say, we really didn't learn much except that there are delays. Um, we don't have, I don't feel that we got good enough answers on what exactly those delays are and how those delays are going to be overcome in a reasonable manner that I can go out to my residents and say, hey, this is what the new plan is, and this is what we're going to do. This is how the city is going to partner with RTD to make sure that we get this done for our residents. Um, so that's kind of what I was hoping to hear this evening, and I unfortunately did not hear that. So, you know, I, and forgive me, I am not, the most politically correct so I, I apologize in advance if I offend you and I, I certainly don't mean to I'm just very straightforward and very blunt when we had the grand opening and we did the ribbon cutting and we all got to get our shovels out and do some work several years ago we were all given tickets to ride opening day 2018 so as Marcy has already pointed out it didn't say um, as other folks have pointed out we certainly have been told that it was going to be opening in 2018. So to hear you all come tonight and say, no, we never said that, is a little disappointing. And so I do feel like it's, it's harder to trust in what you're saying. I absolutely want to believe that this is going to go forward and we're going to be there. But it, it does take, make me take a step back and think, well, you know, I'm not sure how this is really going to go. Um, and then just if our staff if our city manager was managing a project and the kind of communication or lack of specific communication that we have received and the continual delays without having a plan to overcome those i can guarantee you right now he would be fired um, and that's kind of how i feel about what's going on right now and, and i it, it hurts me to have to say that but this is such a critical time for our residents. You know, it's, and it's just so very disappointing to have this happening to our residents. Um, so I'll keep cheering us on and hoping that it goes. Um, it, was, it was absolutely fantastic that we can tell our students, our, our residents, excuse me, and show them pictures. Look, things really are happening. So it's not all at a dead standstill. So that is a very good positive that we can say, we have physical proof. We are moving forward, but that's not going to make them feel much better. Because it doesn't make it, you know, it was great to see, but it's not going to make them feel much better. So just in closing, again, thank you for coming out and facing an angry mob um, this evening. <laughs> angry mob. Um, I appreciate the offer to come to our board meetings. I personally would not want you to come to one of my, one of my ward meetings because our residents would be probably worse than we have been tonight um, and without giving them answers I don't think it would go very well um, but I, I absolutely appreciate the offer that you're willing to come out and talk to our residents some more so again just thank you um, and hopefully we can make this work okay is as we'll go around one more time anyone else want to say anything no I'm good 
Here. So you did put the offer out, but we do have a board meeting tomorrow. <laughs> Jordan and I have a meeting tomorrow night. And really what Kim has said is that we have to face that without an answer. They already know this is going on. The city manager will probably present or Brooke is going to present about what's happening with the end line. And yes, so we listen to you, but we can't give them any type of promise. So that's where we are as council people. Anyone else? Just on a personal note, yes. I attended the uh, elected official briefing Thursday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I know yes, we were getting snow, but there was less than 25% elected officials there. Is that the norm? That was the most that's been there probably in a year two. Wow. Normally it's just staff that goes. Well, I think those are tough because people mm -hmm. have day jobs as well, and mm -hmm. I, I talked to Director Hoy about that on the phone, you know, and so. Um, so that's tough. This isn't our full-time job, Certainly. you know, so we're, we're doing the best that we can representing our communities, but um, we also have nine to five jobs that we have to, to go to as well. And so I don't know if there's flexibility in those or, or whatnot. I know we get updates from staff um, on that stuff. And so, um, but I, I communicate the same thing with Director Hoy that uh, I, I can't get away to, to go to that. And if it was maybe in the evening, that's a different story. But um, so I don't know if there's any talk about that in the future in the future we can take, certainly take a look at that yeah so are the briefings always in the morning yes uh, historically yes sir okay. can we make some adjustments to see if we can get more elected official participation yes we'll take a look at that certainly okay. maybe they all have night jobs <laughs> or here. Or, yeah we do it's here yeah all right is there any other comments thank you for coming we thank appreciate you. it um, and the next time we talk to you, I know there's going to be better communication. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Ashlyn. Okay. All right. Next is communications. And Kim, I'll start with you. Uh, I only have one thing this evening, Mayor, and that is a thank you to Avery for all of the service that you've done. I'm glad you stuck around for the whole meeting so you could hear it and didn't have to hear it on the tape and tried to. But I really appreciate everything that you've done through the Youth Commission and on the Parks Board, and I just want to wish you luck um, down in Denver, and thank you very much. Great. Kyle. Thank you, Mayor. I had the opportunity to uh, attend the food truck carnival, and I volunteered um, at the beer garden, um, which was organized chaos, I think, to say it in a nice way. But um, it was a really neat thing. It was, it's, a, it's a great event for our community, seeing everyone come out, seeing everyone on social media talking about it. Kudos to staff, because I don't, I don't think I saw one negative comment this year um, regarding it, and I thought it was really well planned. And um, kudos to Marcy. and and the staff and, and everyone who volunteered because I think that uh, the funds from the beer garden are going to go to a, a really good cause for our community and, and that's a really exciting thing to see as well and so um, yeah I, I think we're doing some really neat things in our in our city and uh, I'm excited for the next event this year as well with Magic Fest and see what happens there so yes I'm looking forward to that <laughs> that's the first one for us <laughs> okay yeah, I'd like to echo Kyle's remarks. I think I got to relive my childhood at the carnival. I attended Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I spent a lot of money getting stuffed animals and winning a fish that passed away this morning. Oh. <laughs> um, but it was good while it lasted. I had a great time. Um, shout out to AC Designs. I had a, um, a fashion truck. So we bought some Mother's Day gifts there. Um, Ward 1 meeting tomorrow. We have hamburgers and hot dogs, so make sure you come down. It's at the Blue Spruce Pavilion at E.B. Reigns Jr. Memorial Park. Um, meet and greet starting at 6.15, with the meeting to follow starting at 6.30. Um, Friday morning, I got to attend Mountain Range High School. They did a mock congressional hearing on the Constitution, which was great to hear the students um, recite certain things and answer critical questions that are going on currently. Um, and I think that's it. I find it interesting that from all the special events that we have in the city, everybody volunteers for the beer garden. <laughs> you want to sign up for Pirate Fest? What's that? Are you no, signing that's up mine. for Pirate Fest? Oh. No, no, no. But I know it would be, be well manned by everybody. 
That's all. Yeah. 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 Been practicing yeah. my donkey all day. Yeah. Um, the Promenade Sculpture Committee has selected the artist that will be designing and building the four sculptures that will go at the Webster Lake Promenade. And um, he is in town. Michael's trying to set up a meeting with all of us and him so we can kind of talk about what we want. But um, his idea, he's done these native grass sculptures and they're actually 25 foot high. So they're very tall, but they're very, they're very cool. That's all I can say. So anyway, um, there's still discussion with the artist to be ongoing and then hopefully he will have it done by the end of the year. Um, another thing I would like to say, Food Truck Carnival, I just have to say the same thing, thanks to staff. It was outstanding. The layout was so much better this yeah. year. Um, it just worked. It flowed. Um, even though you had to wait in line for food, I didn't feel it was excessive at all. Um, so yeah, well done job this year with staff. Because I know they were all there working really hard. Jim, your staff was working really hard. Um, the ward meeting, shall we talk about? I'm sorry. Oh, I know, I attended the Connect North Glen open house that we had at the Senior Center, and we didn't get a very good turnout that night, but what I would like to say to everybody is this is an ongoing project, and we really need input from people who utilize the trails and the bike paths and have issues with roads and connections. So our website is very friendly on the Connect North Glen um, page so if you just click on it it will take you where you can do interactive mapping and write down all the issues that you have because we really want to hear from people that are using it not from us who like I take a walk every now and then I don't use it for connectivity so it's very important that we hear from the residents so please give your input to the connect Northland web um, page so connect Northland.com. well if you just go to the home page of the okay. city's website and it just says connect north and go in there and it will take it's you all the way even through. easier yes yes and there's a survey also okay so. good that's it all right becky i did not go to the um food truck carnival my date fell through and since i was not picked to run the beer garden i didn't think it was a good idea for me to go I um. you. <laughs> <laughs> well your Actually, time is coming through the, uh, the magic Oh, Pirate Fest is mine. Don't yeah, but no, me. August 1st. Yeah, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> but I actually, um, I don't have anything today except for to congratulate Jordan on doing her first half marathon in her entire life and not dying at the end. Yeah, Very still good. walking. A lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do that again for me, all right? Um, other than that, I don't have anything today. Thank you. Mercy. Um, so on behalf of the North Glen Community Foundation, um, we just want to express our gratitude to the city for allowing us to be part of the Food Truck Carnival. It was definitely a huge, huge success. Um, we'll have numbers in June that I can share with you after we take out some expenses and stuff. But I mean, we had a lot of volunteers. We need a lot more volunteers. Um, but thank you to staff for pulling it off. I mean, I, I know I was out there on Friday at 9.30 and they've been out there for hours before that. So. <coughs> I just really appreciate all the hard work that goes into that, and I, I just think it was a huge success. Um, I also attended the Almost Home Dinner on Friday night, which was wonderful, and I know several other council people attended that. Um, and then a couple updates from the library board and the fire district. Um, so the library board, um, there was a presentation given from Commerce City Urban Renewal Authority um, at the meeting. Um, they have a project in Commerce City, um, which is the redevelopment of the dog track area. Um, and they were in front of the library board um, asking for approval on um, them not receiving the TIF dollars and how that might work. Um, so they um, are planning to talk about that in executive session and um, give input at their June meeting. So that'll be um, interesting and something we'll want to follow. And then um, for fire district um, station 63, you may have seen that there um, tent went up and that is where they're housing temporarily during the day one of their vehicles um, and I found it interesting that um, it took 10 people to <coughs> pull the tent over the top and with scaffolding and everything so um, that was a team effort by everybody and it made it through the hailstorm which they wow. were really worried about right. so um, you would definitely start seeing construction happening over at the, um, <coughs> in the next couple weeks That's it. thank you Antonio yeah, I, I had a pretty busy couple of weeks. I didn't realize that I did all the things that I did, but 
I did the food truck. I did the, uh, the Northland Connect. <clears throat> the Vantage Point uh, graduation and award ceremony was held over at uh, the event center here on 124th, I think it is, Stone Mountain, I think it is, or Stone... Stone Manor. Manor. Uh, Stone Manor and Mountain. Uh, <clears throat> awesome, awesome group of kids. Uh, Vantage Point is a um, high school that is uh, an alternative high school. They're graduating, eight, graduating 83 students and every student has been accepted to a secondary school or the military. Every graduate. These are, you know, kids who don't fit into the normal high school for the most part. And you know, I've had a couple of those kids in my own family. And uh, it's just amazing to see, I mean, they're just amazing kids. Um, I mentioned that I attended the uh, in line for elected officials, and again, I was disappointed that there were many elected officials probably probably four or six of us. Um, I did Mountain Range High School, We the People. Uh, again, awesome bunch of kids. Our country is in good shape, our cities are in good shape. Awesome group of kids. I attended the North uh, Glen Police Department Award Ceremony. Uh, great job by the chief and his staff. Uh, I was happy that there were no Purple Hearts given out, and, and it was kind of a quiet year. Thank you for that. Uh, today I attended, uh, or I had the privilege of riding with Tom Carlson and um, Officer uh, Federico uh, from Code Enforcement, and uh, we did basically tour of the city and then tour of, of, of Ward 4. And, uh, <laughs> There's a lot of going on. There's a lot going on in code enforcement. I, I get caught up in my little cocoon and my little ward, but a lot of stuff going on every place. A lot of stuff. And uh, Jim, thank you for getting that community drive bridge painted. Those tire marks are gone. <laughs> Somebody painted it. Mr. Willett has, uh, and his department are to thank for that, so. Well, it, it, I guess for a, over a year I've been driving through this saying we got to do something about this, we got to do something about this. I mentioned it to you two weeks ago and it's done and thank you. You're welcome. That's it for me, Mary. And you mentioned school and that uh, reminded me that I attended the STEM lab uh, groundbreaking and they were going to have it outside but of course with the weather the way it is they became very creative and went into their common area and um, they had the groundbreaking there and what they did is they had dried earth you know in there and then the students the third grades and the fourth grade um, uh, built some robots and then uh, they actually moved the earth you know <laughs> on there so I mean it was great fun uh, so I just wanted to mention that now their last day of school is Wednesday, so construction starts evidently as soon as the weather <coughs> changes. So, so that's good. All right, um, Lisa. Nothing. Okay, Jim. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of scheduling items. Uh, first of all, I, I was uh, going to be out of the office Wednesday uh, through Monday. I'll be back on Tuesday. Um, my son's graduating from high school on Wednesday, so I figured I'd better make an appearance there. Uh, and uh, Paula Jensen will be the acting city manager uh, during that time period, but I'll be available in town, available via phone and email, of course. Uh, the other thing is uh, July 3rd is uh, rapidly approaching, which is a Monday, and it's a study session night, and I wanted to throw it out to the council to see if you wanted to uh, uh, cancel that study session. Uh, we think that we can fit all the items that we need to on June 19th or July 17th and not really hold up any projects or anything if we go ahead and cancel that. So I'm just going to offer that to you tonight. Okay. I'm fine with that. It was July 3rd, right? Mm-hmm, Monday. Yeah. And the next day I'm by the court. campfire, so I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be here anyway, so. <laughs> so there's two down. <laughs> How's everybody else feel? All right, we're good? Thank we're you. Okay, Forget? great. Thank you. That was it tonight. Okay. All right. Corey, I, you do have some news, don't you? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> My son graduated from high school as well, but beyond yeah. that, <laughs> nothing. 
Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next public invited to be heard up to three minutes. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to council for up to three years? Three years. Three years. <laughs> oh, I'm not. Okay. Three minutes. Uh, yes, please. Come on forward. She looks familiar. I know. I know. She does. <laughs> Hi. My name is Julie Molica. I'm a citizen of Northland Ward 3. Um, I wanted to, I had two comments tonight. First off is I, I do thank everybody for speaking up tonight um, regarding our end line and that delay. I think it's really heartbreaking for the communities up here in the north. And so, um, again, to hear about, I don't know, I guess the, the unanswered questions, I guess, is the best way to put it. We don't, we still don't have an answer of when we're going to get it. Um, I feel, honestly, very uncom not confident with how um, the process is going to be going forward. I feel like communication was a huge issue. Um, everything that you guys said today, I, I echo, and um, I really appreciate you guys speaking up about that. Um, so I feel like there's not really much that we could do about this or anything that you guys could do about this, but thank you for speaking up at least. Um, somebody has our interests in mind because I don't think it's RTD. Um, and then my second comment was to Carol with the um, Norkland Connect. Um, I just had a quick thought when you were talking about how we could possibly make that better, um, especially some of our trails. I was curious if you guys explored the idea of um, working with Chief May and his department regarding putting those like blue police lights in certain areas on the track. So like, you know, have you ever been to a college campus and everybody has those um, the emergency little, yeah, the emergency, emergency little, and then right. they're blue on top. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're called exactly, but um, in some areas, I think that actually might increase usage. Um, uh, especially, I know for me, being a young woman, um, I are you a woman? I'm <laughs> too young. But, we all agree. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> but it is something that um, safety is a, a, a concern of mine, especially when I used to live closer to Webster Lake and walk around there, um, around the far corner. Is a little scary <laughs> towards dusk. <laughs> so, um, just a, a thought. But thank you guys so much for for speaking up tonight. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. For thank coming. you for coming so out. Much. All right. Hmm? Can I say something? Go ahead. Um, Julie. Well, we want to see you at the outreach then, giving yes. that suggestion, or just go online to Northland Connects because that is a good suggestion. So, and you know what, Mayor? I'm really sorry, but Avery and I had Avery's name here, and I Kim did Avery. And I forgot, Avery, I love you. You've been around Youth Commission forever. And um, I'm going to miss you in North Glen, but live long and prosper in Denver. Um, everybody has to move on, and I'm sure you're going to have a great time down there. So thank you for everything you've done. I actually expected you to be up on this council one day. So that kind of bums me out that you're not going to be a resident anymore. But you, you never know. know. You That's just true. don't know. His parents are still here. They are. Right? Yeah. But best of luck to you. That's true. I think we all echo that. So, all right. Um, anyone else want to speak to council for up to three minutes? Ashlyn, you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid to leave. We're, I, we're friendly now. Okay. <laughs> you can get <laughs> You're just going to have to leave before everybody grabs a shovel. <laughs> All right, with that, um, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>